what is up guys and welcome back hope you're all having a great weekend and you're probably sitting there wondering why have we got a weekend upload we never have a weekend upload well the answer is simple i've had a few requests for the maxa bloodborne review and i thought okay let's give it a go let's see what it's all about it's supposed to be really good so i'm looking forward to it also i've been recording Elden ring all weekend so hopefully it'll be ready by tuesday or wednesday i'm hoping so yeah a lot to look forward to I'm certainly hyped for this one. Without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's go. Oh. Alright guys, let's see what this one's about. There'll be a link in the description down below of uh, his video, his channel, all that. Go like and subscribe if you haven't done already. Let's jump into it. Let's see. You have spoilers. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human children at will and consume their innards. If that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening because it gets worse. In this game, you play oh as John goodness. Bloodborne, a foreigner incapable <laughs> of speech without the use of sign language, and stricken with Habsburg disease, comes to the ancient city of London seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. In doing so, he will begin hallucinating talking dolls spider people and the great <laughs> journeying further john bloodborne becomes conscripted into the service of a gay elder god and the 60 year old man he keeps as a pet and is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant in order to cure his anemia to accomplish said herculean task the player must journey through dark forests terrifying nightmares and the meth ridden alleyways of a post-brexit britain slaying monsters <laughs> exploring and tricking women into being impregnated by god so you can consume the child this game is an excellent realization of a metroidvania with something new around every corner a great action rpg which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges and has a yep. gripping story and lore about discovering the eldritch truth so if you can play it yourself because i'm not going to hold back on the details it's no secret that my reviews are entertainment first so i don't suggest using me as genuine advice However, most people can't play this game, ever, because you have to buy a $400 magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. And even then, you get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second with no anti-aliasing. Port this yeah. game to PC, I beg of you. In fact, yes, I can assume that. that a lot of people watching this video will basically never play the game. But keep watching, because I'm hilarious and original. Do that, and I can give you the full, unfiltered, uncensored, unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike experience that is Bloodborne. Oh, this guy is amazing. I'm joking. The gameplay is what makes. That was an intro, a two-minute intro, and we just got everything. That is crazy. Shout out to this guy, man! What the hell? I got so much information. Boom. Okay this game great and the easiest way to describe it is simple but complicated on a simple level your baby brain is responsible for only two tasks dodging and hitting and dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible sounds easy right wrong because every single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence every encounter therefore is tense and engaging when you kill someone it's because you were faster and had more meth than they did on a complicated level you have a gun and normally bullets hurt people but in london bullets are a suggestion <laughs> like the Geneva Convention. Here in England, it's all about the knife bins. Except when you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge your fist through their ribcage like Mortal Kombat and rip out their heart, which is considered rude and a slight annoyance. This extends to behind them if you charge an attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate like fruit by the foot. Side note, the most optimal farming route for currency in the- Okay, thank you for requesting this guy. This is awesome. Absolutely awesome. There is so much going on. This guy, these edits are crazy. Wow. Okay. I don't even know what to say. I'm completely, um, like, there's so much. But he's explaining it in such a funny way. It's absolutely brilliant. This game is called Murgo's Pig Fisting Route. See, I changed the webpage. And in this route, you sneak up behind this guy and do him the dirty. Then entice these two swindler bastards to be mauled to death by members of Organization 13. Repeat 50 times. On a complicated level, every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different movesets. And transforming between them gives you special attacks in addition to running attacks, plunging attacks, 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 attacks. On a theoretical physicist level, your character memorizes squiggly lines and fridge art created by gods for passive bonuses that work regardless of 
with weaponry. My favorites are more money, more money, and more money they stack. <laughs> Finally, on a meta-theoretical chiropractic level, every weapon is customizable with different gem slots that give differing effects for your attacks. And there are different types that can literally change all of the stats of the weapon, like making a fucking spear do more damage based off of intelligence. There's definitely more and a lot of yeah, strategy that how you level up your character, but I assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with all this combat prowess, you may be wondering, Maxor, who are these crusty abominations that you're fighting on screen? Well, to learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the lore. So buckle your britches, bitches, because this shit is wild. If I say something questionable, just accept it as fact. I can be- Just accept it as fact, okay, guys? Whatever he says, just accept it as fact. Entertainment first. He's got this one spot on. Sheesh, who's this dude? Okay, trusted. Right. 60 years ago, 20 rowdy college students took their education extremely seriously because they found woman Cthulhu. She was just in a portable toilet downstairs. Also, because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns Ooh. out the entire world is ruled and created by a race of elder gods beyond human comprehension called the Great Ones. Figuring this out, they got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this. Because it turns out the blood can heal people, which is really good due to all the knife crime. So everyone starts <laughs> drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals, but it turns out eventually the blood turns you into a werewolf. So the church hires a guy named German to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the Hunters, but there's too many beasts, so he gives up. Now the knife crime is increased even more, and okay. German sort of goes insane and creates a life-size doll of one of his students who is an eight-foot-tall Amazonian. He also canonically has sex with it. The moon god, for some reason, kind of takes notice of this and is like, all right, listen, I'm building a suicide squad. I will bring your waifu to laifu if you serve me for all time as my slave. German reasons thinks that this is a great deal and is imprisoned in a dream. This is where you come in. See, the moon god assassinates baby gods for fun, but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it since he's confined to the ninth dimension. So in addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit here to fill tax legislation. So comment your own poorly summarized Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest of us... He... Explains this so quickly and so in such a messed up way that I actually understand it. It's so good. It's really funny. It makes sense what he's saying. Like the law, the way he's saying it, it makes sense. It's funny. I like it. This is brilliant. Non chills. We have Absolutely ample time brilliant. to explain more of what makes this game great. Yes, you Better have been shaped. I am talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In most video games, bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flattening, and nothing will challenge your skill in quite the same way. Except for the goddamn Witches of Hemwick, who were placed into the game for disability access. You can probably tell that Bloodborne is a hard game. We don't even know if a games journalist can beat it. But it's hard in a fair way that tests your skills and reaction time, except for Lawrence, but I'll get back to Lawrence later. What sets this game's bosses apart is that the challenge makes it feel like you are really small dude jabbing a toothpick into a building sized deer demon so yeah i would be impressed if he killed that but not only that unlike dark souls every single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them large beasts can have their bones cracked and their tendons wound into a slinky bone boys can be knocked over and have their marrow sick and human enemies will wince and recoil when they see your height difference as well every boss punishes you for cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward yeah. momentum causing every fight to be an elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth unless you're fighting rom who is the really hungry caterpillar if he had a legion of arachnid slaves who threw their heads underground like ostriches. We don't talk about him. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses, this motherfucker, let me yes. tell you something. The humanoid bosses in this game are paradoxically the most dangerous. But Mikalash is a psychological hazard that will hurt you personally. This boss literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him and his direction depends on RNG, making him an actual speedrun killer. When you corner him, he uses one attack and then you chase him again where he gains the power to insta-kill you. God forbid yeah. you're hit by it because that's 10 minutes gone here's a tip save up 10 poison knives. i was quite lucky with him i think because it didn't take take long he literally went straight into the rooms with me if i remember correctly it didn't take take that long to get him but i'm i'm hearing it's it was really bad for some people it took them ages to get to him that must be so annoying without a doubt worst boss in the game just saying without a doubt
knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole, poison yeah. him repeatedly, and watch him spaz oh. the fuck out until death. You will thank me. But as a result of everyone who isn't oh, Miko shit, conquering a boss in this game is absolutely rewarding on a level that other games cannot match. It's only because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that conquering them is the main reason I play, and their fights are undoubtedly the best I've ever done in video games. But that isn't most of the time in the game. In fact, a lot of your time is spent exploring the areas, so let's get into that. Lesson one in area design, where the fuck am I going? Exploration yeah. is the name of the game, except it's called Bloodborne. Only this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time, because the main enemies in this game are British townspeople. It's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about killing them. The plague of beasts infecting London causes people's teeth to become beast-like, makes you aggressive at night, and slurs your speech. So it's up to you to stop them, as a hunter should. If you don't look up where to go next in this game, good fucking luck. People get lost all the time. Get used yeah. to it. This game doesn't do exploration like, oh, look, there's loot in this hallway. My dopamine's gonna go crazy. That's baby shit. This is daddy's exploration where you find a route back to a place you were in 10 hours ago. And I hope you yeah, weren't expecting a crazy. mini map or any map. Absolutely Every single crazy. hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery and your hand isn't held. Case in point, Cathedral Ward is a level but feels like a hub area because it connects to fucking everything. And where you start the game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop involving torturous experimentation. Just look at the fucking map of this game. Everything overlaps. And yes, there is a level called Nightmare. Wait, there's a map of this game, bro? Can I see it? Damn. There's a map for this game? Cathedral Ward. Upper Cathedral Ward. Old Band Workshop. Etc. Yarnum. Because that's where we went up. Okay. Don't really make sense to me, but yeah, okay. I get it. That's cool. I didn't know there was a map for this game. And yes, there is a level called Nightmare Lecture Hall, and no, it does not connect to the Altar of Despair, although you would think that. Fittingly, the Lecture Hall is the smallest area, and more fittingly, 90% of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. The game also has two completely secret areas that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. And what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in a game loved for its combat, because it's filled with enemies who act out my greatest fears. Stealing currency, permanent. Oh, it gives I hate me fucking guys. chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is proof yes. that From Software hates us all, since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the Field of Corn in Ohio and trek down Waldo. But it's worth it to invade the house of that parasitic queen dwelling in her demented castle, so that she may feel the wrath of the proletariat. All we have to do is kill Prince Philip, who guards the way as an eternal lich. On top of this, there are numerous NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, all with a series of interactions with each other depending on location and timing. For instance, you could could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black sludge, then perform enough blood transfusions to send the nun into a yandere rage. Or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street who only wants to help and assist others. Then mm. take a strange path through the forest and into her clinic to discover that she has been experimenting on all of them in order to create the Blue Man group. And if you want, you can take the umbilical cord away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit in Bloodborne quest lines. And you know what my favorite quest line is? The one where you descend into literal hell. Hell, complete with eternal punishment, insanity, and femboy fishing, the scariest of them all. I'm of course talking about the DLC, the only DLC for this game. And if you play through Bloodborne, you have to DLC. play through the DLC. I'm not giving you a fucking choice. So to learn why, you should play the best expansion ever made since yes. more galactic adventures. Jump jungles. Come with me on this amazing journey to find the secrets of the Bloodborne, the old hunters. I want you to Let's imagine go. hell. Now imagine hell written by HP Lovecraft. It will be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. This DLC has none of that except the squids. For you see, those college kids from the lore section of the video were built fucking different. They experimented on an entire village and possibly beat up a god of the sea so fucking bad that her consciousness in the ninth dimension died. We spent an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the milf god. But anyways, in the process of this, it cursed them and all of the hunters to be doomed to a hell upon death, where they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity, indistinguishable from a political subreddit. Case in point, this is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC and has a reputation for causing refunds. Not because he's bad, but because he's too good for you. The first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that he absolutely destroyed me. Ludwig. I miss him though. That was a fun fight. Man, this guy's good. This guy's good. It's only been 11 minutes. He's got so much information in 11 minutes. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy, guys.
This, this must have taken him weeks to do. That Golden Corral is not actually a real corral, but like every restaurant except Golden Corral, the rewards at the end are delicious because his second phase is even harder. Now, I'm not going to lie, this DLC has four bosses and three of the hardest bosses I have ever fought in any video game ever, so your ass will be clenched the entire time, and the fact that he's the third hardest is fucking concerning. Some people tell me, Maxor, your videos have gotten me through tough times because they made me laugh, but like this boss, you are the one who is truly overcoming these challenges, and I believe believe in your ability to beat both of them. King Boss Lightning Round. The DLC has many such cases of amazing bosses, including Lady Maria, who is the basis for German's extremely creepy eight foot tall doll fetish, but we'll get back to that. And Orphan of Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. If you enjoy the sensation of being beaten to death with a sharpened placenta, this is the fight for you. And as with everything that From Software makes, they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day. I'm of course talking about Lawrence, which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell. Take my advice. Don't fight Lawrence, you only lose a part of yourself. Since this yeah. boss fights you by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere. I've always wanted my game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. To wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC yes. music is fucking insane. I don't know what it is Absolutely. about Japanese composers being able to make better symphonies than the continent that invented them, but just take a listen. Holy shit, I am alive right now. Have you ever thought, as oh, I do, dude. that this game is just too good? That you would really rather be playing a shittier version of the game? Such as the engagement of the Chalice Dungeons. I, of course, jest. They're fine, probably, I except for half of them. Because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon generation for all of those who wish to break free of the shackles of good level design. Let's talk about how, and more importantly, why. First of all, Bloodborne has a system of dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that are random. For my footage, I played the shared dungeons that you can be guaranteed the pain you witness on screen is mandatory. One of the biggest strengths of Bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemy encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of Miyazaki. But I don't think I have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced. But fortunately, most enemies you encounter in the Chalice dungeons are new to spare British people your wrath, so you instead fight SCP-96. But why are we here? It turns out that the entire city of London was built on a Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization called the Tumerians who discovered the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously disappeared. Wow, I wonder what happened. This is all cool in theory, but the reality is that most of the time you fight the same four enemies, and the first three dungeons can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally wouldn't notice. The Chalice dungeons are so forgotten that the developers use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite is the man who aggressively them. rolls at you, Stark Nick. The Chalice Dungeons had some awesome boss music. I'm not even lying. That was good. The, the enemies were a bit easy. I think I did them a bit late. But the rest. The music. It was alright, man. It ain't that bad wearing only his Nikes. The uniqueness also extends to the bosses, and they're actually pretty cool, like Tumerian Descendant, Watchdog, and the three overweight men. Do you remember that basic enemy from like two levels? He is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. The only thing oh, stopping me from throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that Miklash isn't back. And if you're going to have replays, you probably want to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the Watchdog fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. I beat Sekiro backwards on a keyboard and this shit is too fucking much. Now normally that would be all, but the dungeons go deeper. What we've discussed so far is merely the surface and there is a much darker syndicate lying just below. These places you must never venture for they are the save edit dungeons, whereby through wizardry the community are able to conjure up deep dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Of these secrets there are only two that I shall reveal to you and the first is the cum dungeon. Yes, you heard that correctly and clearly. The cum dungeon is the name of the most optimal farming route ever conceived by the fucking cricket people who do what? this shit, whereby the player enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high-level boss yeets itself off a cliff. Murgo's pig fisting route can give you 10,000 echoes, this gives 83,000, and if you thought that that sorcery was bad, it gets much worse. You can insert anything from the game files by save editing a chalice dungeon anything. This includes cut and unfinished content from the game that the developers forgot to delete, like this doggo That's who crazy. attacks you with invisible lightning. Overall, the Chalice Dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play, and yet, I love them. Everyone loves them, because they allow us I to further them. explore a long-dead game with the help of a passionate... I love them, and I only did the first three, the one that 
what the Simon says, wouldn't even notice the whatever you said. So it ain't that bad, bro. They weren't that bad. Community. Now, before we sign That's off, me, anyway. I know what you're thinking. Maxor, what about the multiplayer? That I would love to talk about with all the footage I have, but it's dead. If this game releases on PC and it better, then I will talk about the multiplayer extensively. And finally, this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about the hunter's dream. After all the combat, the battles, and the difficulty of this game, it's nice to have a place to recharge, purchase items, upgrade weapons, and watch as it violently burns to the ground. This is where you'll find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity, and his doll waifu that he sold his existence to be with. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, and German says you're allowed to have sex with her. When I fell down and felt defeated, she was there to pick me up. When I emoted at her randomly, she pretended to be impressed, and she was there, graciously standing in the background of this one shot that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, and the game is perfect and complete because she she is in it. Now excuse me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. Should you get the game, yes, absolutely, I am biased. In fact, you should physically enter Sony's headquarters and demand that it be ported to PC. I will be right there with you. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. If you would like to contribute your funds accrued through extensive federal government corruption, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. I would also like to thank the kind denizens of the Mythbusters smut discord who sent me half the memes in this video and as always thank you for watching all right guys that was awesome don't forget to like the video go check out the channel if you haven't already all right guys that was awesome absolutely amazing so funny so well done shout out to him man wow i'm gonna leave a link in the description down below of his channel and this video as i said at the beginning and yeah Thank you so much for uh, joining me on this little, uh, little review. It was absolutely amazing. Time flew by. So much information. Although some of it is a bit, you know. But yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please smash the like button. If you're new here, subscribe. And on Tuesday or Wednesday, we will have Elm. All right. I'll catch you later. Peace.